Folks, today I'm going to talk about three biotech stocks that are on my chopping block right now. Now, I want to explain something to you, and this is very important, and this is something that you need to pay very close attention to. Back in February and March, when COVID-19 was the biggest thing and everybody was scared of dying from, from this virus, uh, volatility was going nuts. And if you were a biotech company, you could throw a stone at, at a biotech company and it would rally. It actually reminded me of the exact type of climate internet stocks had in, in, the, in the mid 90s. If you were an internet company, you were doing great. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter who you were. If you needed a loan, if you needed money, if you needed help, if you needed market cap, if you were an internet company, you'd get it. Because at that point, internet was so new that the general public didn't know much about it. And when someone doesn't know much about it, all the the apples or all the fruits or all of the, everything tends to move. Um, or like all the trees, all the trees grow. And what happens with time is, as the industry becomes a little more mature or a little selective, or the event takes a little over time, uh, time passes by, what happens is uh, the investor public becomes a little more sophisticated. And that's kind of what happened with the biotech. Honestly, I'm telling you right now, if you look at the internet industry in the mid 90s, that's exactly what the biotech industry is going on right now. I remember Time Warner paying billions of dollars for, for uh, Time Warner paying billions of dollars for American Online. And it was literally a worthless company at that point. And again, a lot of, a lot of strange things happen. But here's what, what's happening in, in biotech. Back in February and March, uh, we saw the gravity of what was happening in China and Europe and America. We saw how many people were dying. And it, it, it's still happening right now. I mean, not much has changed. We're seeing kind of like a, uh, resurgence of this COVID in Europe and it's happening in certain states in America. But what happened in February, we didn't really know how things were going to shake out in March. We didn't know who was going to come up with a cure, when the cure or vaccine was going to come out, if this thing was going to be deadly or not. We didn't know anything. But we did know that whoever was going to solve this problem was more than likely going to be a biotech or a medical company. So as a result of that, you saw an uptick in uh, biotech companies, no matter if they were related to COVID, if they were not related to COVID, if they had one percent share in another company that was doing something with COVID, all of a sudden the stock would go up. But over the past seven months, six, seven months, it's been, a, it's been several quarters. We have been able to kind of identify the winners and the losers, the stocks, the biotechs that are really going to be uh, uh, a cause and effect or a long-term solution in, in, in uh, COVID-19. We've been able to figure out which stocks are in phase one, phase two, phase three, all of this has had a uh, time to kind of reverberate. And, 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 and now we've gotten a really good idea of where these stocks stand. So a lot of the stocks that we're seeing buying pressure, real strong accumulation six, seven months ago, have investors finally figured out that, hey, you know what, this stock is good, but this stock is bad. And a lot of them, a lot of them have been seeing major, major, major sell-offs. As a matter of fact, I want to show you something interesting. If you look at my stock fetch chart, this is my CS, this is my cumulative strength index code. I want to show you something interesting. It's like a complete opposite of what we saw six months ago. But this is really interesting. Take a look at this real quick. If you look, this it has 489 stocks, and if you look at the weakest stocks, the weakest stocks right now. Six months ago, seven months ago, it was energy, energy stocks. But if you look at it now, you will see, look at this, Guild. That's a biotech stock, right? Making lows. Let's, let's look at further. And I mean, and this is the last page. How about BIIB? That's a biotech stock. These are two biotech companies. These companies were doing a lot better than they are now. How about LLY, Lilly? right how about let's see if we could find some more let's see here they're here I, I mean how about amgen amgen lily um biib 
Gilead Science, these are some of the biggest stocks and these stocks were making all time highs, but they're on the last page here. This is the bottom, this is the last page. Each page has uh, 100 stocks. So you're seeing these stocks in the bottom 10%. I, I don't think I went below 50th. So you're looking at stocks that are in the 50th, in the, in the last spot, in the last 10 percentile. And I just named some of the biggest biotech companies in the world. So this shakeout is actually very positive because it's like a filtering system. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of biotechs go south. And that's been what's been going on the last month. Let me show you a, a little interesting little time back machine. I'm going to go back six months. Look at the top stock, DXCM, Regeneron. Look at the top stocks. A lot of West Pharmaceuticals. This is like a time back machine. Clorox. Remember Clorox when we when when people were talking about Clorox, uh, getting rid of germs and so forth. Look at Lilly, look at Guild, look at these two stocks. They were the top in the top. Let's see, that's that's like twenty stocks, top twenty stocks six months ago. That's May fourth, and now they're at the bottom. I think I might have just showed you some really good examples because we just saw stocks that were this go from the strongest in May in the top 10, 15, 20 stocks to the bottom 50 stocks in the S&P 500. So that shakeout is something you need to take advantage to, of and be careful because again, now it's not biotech stocks. Now it's which biotech stock? So let me show you three biotechs that I think you should avoid I mean, you should run away from these stocks like you would uh, run away from COVID-19. First one is GLPG. This stock did not have a good run. It's been going down for several months and it's hovering near new lows. Avoid this stock. This stock has the potential to go down to about $50, $60 per share. GLPG, because there's still some market appreciation or heightened valuation for biotechs. It's not done yet. It'll probably take another six months. Meanwhile, you can enjoy the profits on a short. And if you're long this stock, it's a dog with fleas. Get rid of it. Uh, GLPG, you don't want the stock. Next one, it sounds a little bit like Regeneron, but it's not. It's Re Regen X Bio. Regen X Bio. Again, look at this thing. It's almost near the bottom. This thing, if it takes out the $26 level, this stock is going to go down. RGNX, avoid this stock. This one here. Ligand Pharma. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. It's just bouncing off. And again, all of these stocks should take out the low and go lower over the next several months. So you got LGND, Ligand Farm, you got Regen Regenex Bio, RGNX, and you've got GLPG. These are not good stocks. And over the next few months, you're going to be seeing other biotech stocks cooling off. Let's look at Lily. Let's take a quick look at it. Man, Lily's a big stock, really, really big stock. But to see BIIB, to see Amgen, to see Lily at the bottom 50th percentile, that's not positive. That's very, very, very negative. I guess the internet is very slow today for some reason. Let's see if we can get a chart of Lily. Man, it's just spinning and spinning and spinning. Let, here we go. Let's see, it's at 132. Let's get an idea of, man, it's loaded. It's taking forever to load. I think bar charts is having a, oh, nope, here it is, just loaded. Look at this thing, same thing. That's a dog, that's a dog. You can include Lily, L-L-Y, in this analysis as well. Look at this thing. It's a dog, and I think all of these stocks are going to take out the low. They're not, they're just not that, um, if they're not, if they don't have a COVID right now, vaccine on the table, don't look at them. There's better stocks to buy because you, uh, most investors are putting money into the two, three stocks like Regeneron and a couple of others that do have vaccines on the table. You don't want these. They're dogs with fleas. Hope that helps. Folks, if you want to collect extra monthly income right now, I'm urging you to click on the link below to check out former hedge fund managers Tom Busby's America's Income Project. Inside, you'll learn how a strange financial technique could allow everyday people like you to collect real cash every single week. I'm talking about the potential to earn $10,400. That's big money. And 
You don't have to be rich to do it. You can collect that much monthly income from the same amount of money found in an average America's retirement account. That's right. Click on the link below to see Tom's income generating secret. Do it now.